hey everyone it is old roommates here with another episode for you today we revisit the golden girls spin-off the golden palace starring everyone but the author <laughs> so thank you all for being a friend and listening to old roommates here we go Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to Old Roommates, the only podcast that revisits pop culture through a middle-aged lens. Mm -hmm. This is Brian. And this is Christina. And we are talking today about the Golden Palace, currently mm -hmm. on Hulu. Check your local listings. Um, the 1992 spinoff of The Golden Girls which, um, for the unfamiliar, is one of the best shows ever made ever. on television. Ever. Christina, Christina and I, many, many, many times, we would watch The Golden Girls, like probably every night on Lifetime when yep. we lived together. And it's one of my favorite shows ever. And, and so it's the, one, one of the reasons why can't, we can't revisit it. That's right. Yeah, like, so people ask... Like, we oh, right. wanted to, but we it we wouldn't still be watch a revisit. It. We, I still watch it all the time. Me too. So... Um, or, you know, obviously in reruns. But the thing is, um, with Golden Palace, we wanted to dive in. It, it has been a little hard to find. So it came up on Hulu, and we decided to dive right in, especially with the recent-ish passing of Betty White. We have lost all four Golden Girls now. Mm. So we thought it was a, an appropriate time to revisit this, the Golden Palace, which was a, only a one-season show. So, we begin, as we always do, by talking about then, Christina, I want to know your relationship with the Golden Palace. Okay. Well, before I do that, oh, yeah. I do want to mention Betty White because you mentioned, obviously, she just passed. Mm. And she was by far my favorite Golden Girl. Well, maybe not by, maybe not by far, but she, I love ba Betty White so, so much, as is everyone. And I saw a meme, like, on Facebook or something, and it said something like, you know, Betty White... Um, lives, uh, entertains us, you know, for whatever, a hundred yeah, years right. or 99 years. Yeah. And we still want her to, <laughs> yeah, yeah. to live longer. It's like, it's like what an amazing woman that was. Mm -hmm. She was anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, just want to throw that out there. <clears throat> so golden palace, I watched, to be honest, I think I only watched like two episodes on yeah, way I back understand. then. Yeah. Watched like one or two episodes, hated it because um, I can put my finger on it more now, okay. but at that point in time, I think I was just angry about it. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily because Dorothy wasn't involved. Mm -hmm. I get that. Some yeah. actors didn't want to do whatever, but I was really, I think just very annoyed and angry that it wasn't better. Okay. Yeah. I really think that's what it was. It, it lost a lot of, a lot of like heart and soul for me and I was just like kind of bitter about it. Mm -hmm. I was like, "Ugh, why are you doing this? Why?" <laughs> so I think that's why I stopped watching it yeah. because I just didn't think it was good, and I was like pissed about it. Yeah, I didn't want it to soil my memory of the Golden Girls. I understand that. Mm -hmm. What about you, Brian? Thank you for asking, Christina. I think um, I'm not saying I'm better than you, but um, I watched five episodes before. Wow, I did that. Yeah. does so that make you better or worse? Actually. <laughs> So I want so B. Arthur, as most people know, I just uh, I love B. Arthur. I loved B. Arthur then. I love her probably even more now in, in hindsight. But um, but without B, yeah. So right off the bat, it was like back then I was like, well, you know, there's no Dorothy, and but I but I was so excited that they were, were going to keep it going. Mm -hmm. And I watched about five episodes back then, and I didn't like it. I thought well, there were too many other characters I didn't care about, mm -hmm. and the whole thing felt a bit manic. It felt a bit desperate. And the characters seemed a little different than I remembered on the Golden Girls. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you know, so it just felt very busy and a little annoying, to be honest. And I do think without that strong center of Dorothy's Bornak, it just went a little crazy. And I, and I just, I was like, yeah, I don't really care. Mm -hmm. So that was then. And, I, and, you know, we just said this recently that we, you know, we typically re will rewatch things that we love to see if we still love them. But this is interesting because we both talked about this and we didn't like the Golden right. Palace then, but now we're diving in and we're going to see if, how we, how we do now. So Christina, now we're going to, we'll, we'll go, what, we watched a handful of episodes. We watched a few episodes 
before. Yeah, what did we do? We did. We did two with two before. Yeah, the two before Dorothy visits again, and then the last two, and then we did a bonus episode for Patreon. Yes. So the first, we watched the very first episode of the Golden Palace episode one, as it were. Mm -hmm. um, Christine, let's let's jump in. Or do you want me to jump in because you're chewing? I just chewed. No, I just <laughs> finished one of my, my one of my ginger chews, so I'm good to, to good to talk. Mm -hmm. I will say, you talk about your love of Dorothy, which yeah. I totally agree. I love Dorothy as well, and B. Arthur. Mm -hmm. On Patreon, you're going to share with us an essay. Yeah. So so I used to be part of this writing group, and we wrote all these personal essays. And I have a definite affinity for B. Arthur, and I. Um, and I wrote this piece about growing up without really like a role model, like to be, to feel very different and not mm -hmm. comfortable, like really even in my own body with my own voice and just how I sort of connected with B. Arthur because she was so tall and there were a lot of jokes that she was very masculine and manly and yes. I had a lot of jokes about me, but I was pretty feminine and her voice was so different and she was kind of known for her voice yes. and there were a lot of jokes about her voice, but she like... She leaned into it mm -hmm. and she would sing on the show. And, and I realized like, you know, what makes you different can make you special and unique. And I, 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 and you could have told me that a million times, but until I really identified it in B Arthur, yes, I was like, oh, and so I think, so that piece is really about growing up, um, really more of like a high school moment. Cause it was the golden girls is 85 to 92 or 90. Yeah. 92. So, um, so yeah, so that piece, I, so we submitted a bunch of our, our work to Thought Catalog and um, Thought Catalog picked my piece and it's on there and I'm telling you the truth, there are times where I will get an occasional comment from someone saying, thank you for writing this, wow. this is like really, this is, speaks to me too and, and just feeling, that feeling differently, not being comfortable with your own voice is a really right. tough thing or comfortable with your own look, you know, mm -hmm. so um, I think it... I learned something from it and I, and I wrote this piece and it, it meant something to some people and it, it, you know, so I'm, I'm sharing that on Patreon too. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Yes. Yeah. Now back to the episode. Oh my oh. God. You <laughs> asked me. So, no, so that'll be on patreon.com yeah. slash old roommates. Yeah. If you guys want to read it along with a bonus episode um, of the golden palace. And really quick, so, really quick. Yeah, yeah. There's like that essay. There's like four more parts to it, but it's only the first, only, I only submitted the first part. So oh, okay. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> Well, if you guys want more, uh, you know who to ask for it. So, my original thought, okay, when I started to rewatch this, yeah. I had completely forgot they used the same goddamn song. So, I think that this is part of what the problem is with me from the get-go. Yeah. Is they're trying to be something different, but they're trying to be what they were, and they can't, they couldn't choose a side. And I think I would have been more comfortable with them choosing a side. Is it still the Golden Girls? We're going to use the same song and all that. Or is it something new, new. and fresh and different? Use a different song. Yeah. I, it, it really irked me every time I heard it. It's, it's, it's a different composition of it. Yeah, yeah. But it's the same song. Absolutely. So I was super annoyed from the very beginning of this. I'm like, oh, God, here we go again. Mm -hmm. So they, they introduce these two new characters and a little boy yeah. who kind of disappears somewhere down he the sure line. He sure does. So it was just an odd, it was kind of an odd beginning. And I think my original thought was, why do they feel like they have to add new characters to these three who are strong enough on their own? Oh, I, I, I had that same note. And my right? thought was, it's almost like, look at the colors. Like, it's almost like to distract from the absence of Dorothy. Yeah, it was weird. It was like... It was too busy. It was too busy, and it really watered down the other three characters. Do you agree? I completely agree. And I, and I'm, I didn't... I couldn't really articulate this back then when I just knew this gut reaction was like, I don't like this. <laughs> yeah. Make it stop. Yeah. But now that I'm watching it, I'm kind of forced to watch it for this podcast. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was actually, you know, honest, truly, I was looking forward to seeing it because, especially since Betty White, with her passing yeah. and everything, you tend to go back and look at some of your favorite things of her and, you know, the Golden Girls in general. And, like, this was something that I could see with new eyes. Like, I had not seen. Yeah. So I was actually looking forward to that. But anyways. But, you know, the, the, my, that was my first thought was, they're not, like, they were strong enough to be their own storyline 
their own base before, why are they watering them down now? So I feel, I feel a little differently than that. I feel it wasn't so much watered down for me. It was like, in particular, Blanche, because mm -hmm. I love Blanche. And I found Blanche to be a bit desperate. Like, I feel like on The Golden Girl, she was very, like, very sexual and very confident. Yes. And she always thought she was just the best. And in the golden in Golden Palace, when she has to turn up the sexiness, it there's something that feels a little desperate about her. Yes. And I know that like you know running the hotel, like they talk. This is a big negative for me. Uh, almost every single episode, because I watched a lot more than what we had yes. to. There's a lot of talk about money, 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 money. I don't want to watch these characters that I love have money problems. Mm -hmm. And it's real money problems. Every other episode is like we might lose the hotel or oh my god we got you know and it's like. I don't want to watch these beloved characters struggle right. in this really bad investment, and it's constant. Well, that, because then it becomes about, it's a show about a hotel. Right. And it's not a show about... These women. These women. Yeah. And that's, I think, part of the problem, yeah. is they're trying to have like these storylines outside of the women. So when then the women come in, they have to just do, what do they have to do? They just have to keep the up their. Yeah. No, they just have to keep up their shtick. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so let's let's pump up the volume with yeah. with Blanche's sexuality. Let's pump up the volume with you know Rose's nativity. Yeah. And you know it's like they didn't have much else to do, and that's what was like bothersome. It's like mm -hmm. give these women a storyline for these women. Well, my, Not just about the hotel. Right. My feeling was, too, is that, like, and again, you mentioned all the characters swirling around, too. It's like, in, you have then you have the guests of the hotel. And it's right. so much. And it's like, remember, like, the Golden Girls, it was like, you know, they all had separate, that was the other thing, they had separate lives. Yes. And they reconnected at the house. Yes. But now their lives are all connected and at work they're all connected. Mm -hmm. And you have, what well, you really realize is this very limited storytelling going on. Yes. And none of it really involves them. None of it. It's like, none of it. And so you just have them, yeah, like you're saying, you have them just reacting to They're stuff. They're like secondary characters. It's really unfortunate. I will say, um, uh, the audience, so you missed one little part about episode one, which is it starts off in the house. <gasps> That's right. And they're moving and the three of them are on the sofa and the sofa is carried out. I got legitimately sad. Yes. It made me a little Agreed. sad. Agreed. Yes. Um, and and I don't think they should have done it that way. Nope. No. no they, I think that was to the detriment, for it sure. It truly picks up, like, it seems like it picks up, like, what, two months after Dorothy leaves, it seems? Yes. So, um, and it seems like an abrupt choice. I mean, I mean, just so bizarre. It's bizarre in many, in many, many ways, but I think, um... Uh, Rue, so a little little trivia, Rue McClanahan, all Rue wanted was a new roommate. Rue's like, let's keep the house. Yeah. I want just a new roommate. Let's like recast. We'll have a new character. It'll be great. The they could have had the Don Cheadle come in as a new roommate. Yeah, really. The producers, Estelle and Betty White, were like, well, this is it's going to be too noticeable without B. Let's just shake it up completely. And Rue was the only one that was like, I really don't like the idea. Of course, they'll go with it. But she was the one that was like, I don't want it. I really yeah. don't like this idea. So, uh, like, but she was just outnumbered, and here we go. But I do say the audience, it's a still a live studio audience, and I'm gonna be honest, I think they made it even fun. I think they made it funnier because mm -hmm. they were into it. Like, the audience, they were so happy to be they there, they were cheering every line, they were so happy yeah. to be there. I agree, I agree. Um, interesting though, Betty White gets top billing. I saw that Betty yeah. White got third billing. And the Golden Girls. Now she gets top billing. Rue is second. I wonder there was some sort of negotiation that's there. A, that's a bit, yeah, interesting. Probably because she wanted, she, probably she was more for the show than Rue was. And it was a little punishment. Could be, could be. I also, I mean, I want to say she was probably more popular than, than Rue. Blanche. Yeah, pr yeah, probably. I do. I think that Rose was more well, popular. And also Betty White for Emmys, like, Betty White was, I think, consistently nominated for an Emmy for the Golden Girls, and the other ones weren't. I mean, in the beginning, the first few years of the Golden Girls, they they, they all won an Emmy sure. for the Golden Girls. But in, in later seasons, I think only Betty White still kept getting nominated. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that doesn't make that didn't surprise me that much. Um, but I did laugh when I, mean, I don't remember this at all. But like I, but they mentioned Dorothy a lot. They do, especially I, in that first episode. Yeah, and I like that. Yeah, because at one point she's like, "I wish uh, uh, Rose says to Blanche, I wish Dorothy was here.'" Um, she was, she was 
inches as I am to beat you up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, I saw that. To beat, she, cause, no, no, but she could beat the crap out of you. Not out of you. you. Yeah, That's right. What she says. Yeah, I wrote that. Um, and then I did like when Rose outwits the holdup man, and you're like, "What is the side yes. of Rose? Like she's so good." And then she, but then she calls four and one instead of nine one one. Oh my god, <laughs> that was good. Yeah, some of these things were true to the character, but it was not enough. No, because they it, it, there like, was no storyline. It was all shtick. It's it's all, and it just felt really like you know a bit tacked on. And again. I don't want to see these women in financial danger. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see these women in peril. I don't want to see them being being like hoodwinked by like young people trying to sneak into the hotel. Like I don't want to see these these right these elderly well elderly these senior characters being oh. exploited. Let's let's talk oh. about that for a second. Okay. I did a little bit of research. Okay. Uh oh. This is going to be a little bit interesting. Okay. Especially since you just recently had a birthday. Thanks. So. Season one of the Golden Girls. The Golden Girls. Okay. Yeah, the Golden yeah. Girls in 1985. Yeah. Rose was 55 years old. <laughs> Dorothy was 53. Wow. Blanche was also 53, and Sophia was supposed to be 79. Yeah. So when we're looking at the Golden Palace, of yeah. course, 1992, Rose was 63, Dorothy and Blanche were 61. Yeah. Um, and Sophia was whatever that is. Yeah. And, but what's interesting is Sex and the City, right? Yeah. This reboot. Yeah. And, and just like that. Yeah. Miranda and, um. Carrie. And Charlotte. Oh, okay. Are 54. In real life? The in, actresses? In the, um, okay. in the show. I don't know about it in real life. Oh, okay. All right. On the show. All right. And Carrie is 55. Huh. The same age as Rose in 1985. <laughs> Is that the most bizarre thing? Yeah, it's the crazy. The same ages as the Golden Girls when they first started. Yeah, that's really funny. Really funny. It's so there are crazy. Com and, um, so online, there are comparisons to Golden Palace in, in just like that. Yeah. It's like, it, it's like, are they just really forcing this? You know, you, you have a foursome, you, you go down to a threesome, and, and, and really... And just like that, it's so it can, funny. It's the same thing. Yeah. And, and just like that, can be accused of the, of the same thing. And just like that, which I've not seen, but I know through you, I have seen it. Yeah, it's like there's a ton more extra characters. So many extra characters, and but I will say, and, and, and diversity, right? Because Golden yes. House, there's a Hispanic cook, there's the black hotel manager, mm -hmm. um, there's like the Some, motherless child, right? It's all this like, yeah. the, and then the people that come through the hotel are all very, very different. Mm -hmm. There's mental illness. Uh, there's see, there's um, people with Alzheimer's. There's, it's just all over the place. Yeah. And I think so. I think there are some it's very fair similar. Comparisons. Yes. The the thing that in and I'm not going to say whether I liked it or not. Okay. But the, and all right, I didn't really like it that much. Okay, there I said it. Oh, Golden Palace. But, um, okay. but well, no, I was oh. in, in just like oh, that. Just that. Okay. The, the difference between and Just Like That and The Golden Palace, though, is that the, the women still had their own storylines. Got it. Whereas I felt like that was the biggest missing piece. Yeah, they have no other lives. It's In like, fact, Christina, I would argue, when, they're, if they, when their other lives enter that hotel, it's always negative. Yes. And it, and it, it, like, it infests their lives. Like, miles you didn't probably like, oh. did you watch them with the daughter? The daughter comes yes. back. Yes, oh yeah, my God. yeah, that's one. It is all negative shit. And then at one point, Blanche's daughter comes back and she says something really the rude. The granddaughter. To the granddaughter is the one I saw. Okay, there's another episode. Oh, no, no, Blanche's, and the Blanche's daughter. Oh, my God. Which I was happy to see her, but they made her a jerk. Well, like, that oh, whole story not, was so, oh, so stupid. But also gross. So we can go into... Yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah. yeah let's get so into some of the episodes. Two. Right. Episode so, two. So episode one, oh. let me just see what I have for my notes Sorry. here. That I did have that that note that um, I wish Dorothy was here so that she can beat the crap out of you. That made me really happy. Yeah. Happy. Um, and then at one point, Cheech comes walking in because mm -hmm. Cheech is our the cook. cook. Yeah. I'm back, and Sophia turns around. Dorothy. Oh my god! It was so <laughs> good. I laughed out loud. I laughed out loud at that. So it's not all bad. Yeah. No. There's some but, there's some funny stuff in here. Um. So I wrote. Down on the first episode, making the decision to buy the hotel. I really feel like that should have been a full episode in the house, mm -hmm. right? If they're gonna do this, let's do it like let's put some substance in here, right? Well, but maybe they could have, you know, just had like a kind of a conversation about like what are we gonna do? Are we gonna get another roommate? What should we do? And then they have this conversation like, oh yeah, let's get a hotel, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. 
as opposed to just one opening scene. Yeah. And it would have been a little bit more closure, I think, for the whole the house and everything else. Mm -hmm. And then starting at the very end, one scene in the hotel. God damn, it could have been someone inheriting a hotel. What if what yep. if someone at, like Rose's the um or Sophia, Shady Pines, a friend from Shady Pines left her a hotel and Sophia wants to prove it to her friend and keep the hotel alive. Yeah. And that's because Sophia, you find out, hasn't even later in a later episode. Sophia's only donated like a candy dish to the hotel. Yes. So that could have been interesting. What if Sophia's friend at Shady Pines died and left her this hotel? That would have been great. <coughs> it would have been great. Because then it would have, and that would have given it some substance. substance. Some, yeah, it would have yeah. done something. Exactly. Anyway. Um, and then I just did say that the, um, this everything seemed too forced and too fast. Yeah. And it didn't make sense. It was never like, there was never an explanation as to why they yeah. did this. Yeah. So that was lacking for me. And then the epilogue at the table. Do you remember the epilogue? They're all sitting at the yeah, table, yeah, yeah. and then I think it was John, you know, Don Cheadle's line said, "So what happens here?" <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was kind of cute. Okay, let's move on to episode. Yeah. So we didn't do an episode two; we did episode three with Miles. Yeah, I will say really quick though, episode two, I did watch it. Yeah, and it's good. It is funny. I laughed a lot. Basically, really quick, they have um, Rose works her magic and gets them. Um, sponsorship through a talk show. The deal is the guests have to stay, can stay at the hotel for free, but um. they get all this publicity. <coughs> so they're all excited. They sit down and watch the talk show. And it's like, today on Talk Miami, men who kill and are set free. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so, so Bobcat Goldthwait shows up, oh, and they God. think he's like a psycho killer. He turns out he's the doctor, right? But then, oh, it, and it's hilarious. Then it ends, and it's like, so they're like, well, you know, it's like, well, who, that was a close call. But you know, Rose, I really think you did a good thing here, and, and this is going to be a good thing for the hotel. And they're watching, like, tomorrow on Talk Miami, Midnight Shame. Adults who wet their bed. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, guests of the show stay at the Golden Palace. And they're all, oh, like, you know. Oh, my God. So there's some funny things. Um, but I'll tell you, that episode two is all about money. All about money. And it's so, so depressing. So a lot of it is all about yeah. money. The, the other thing I will say that I, was, that I found very annoying, and I know you're saying, like, you didn't like the chaos of all the guests and there's yeah. so many different people. One thing that I felt that they should have had was more people working at the hotel. Not as speaking lines, just people like waitresses. To help. To help. It was but so they, unrealistic to think that these three or oh, four could, could people, hand, I could guess, do all of this, are yeah. going to run an entire hotel. It didn't make any sense. And Christina, this is part of the, a big part of my problem with the show. And I will say this. This is a little bit of a spoiler. I didn't hate it. I really didn't. Yeah. But... It just, it was constantly a downer. Like, because Rose, they often show Rose, like, like wiping her forehead. Sophia is, like, has to sit yeah. down a lot. And I'm like, I don't want to watch this. This is yeah, rough. They're, they're Blanche, not is, Blanche is so frantic. She's always running back and forth. And I'm like, I, like, the, the, the reason that there are more people, it said consistently, is they can't afford to pay them. So that, that's pretty depressing. So they yes. have to do everything on yeah, their own. They needed to, like, put that whole money business aside and at least look a little bit more realistic. Like, really? Rose is cleaning every single room in the Making hotel? Making all the beds? It didn't make sense. Oh, my God. Sense it's crazy. At all. So, episode so anyway. three. Yeah, episode three. It starts with um, a conversation about they're basically, they're using card games as, a, as euphemisms. Yes. So, um, and then it gets into a conversation about playing solitaire. So I'm like, well, I'm like, so I appreciated that to the point of, well, at least some edge here. Like yeah. the Gold, Golden Girls had a lot a of lot edge. A lot of edge, They yeah. talked a lot about masturbation and, and a lot of sex talk. Mm -hmm. And I was glad I didn't lose that edginess. Uh, and I did find it, I did find it pretty funny. Sure, I did too. Oh, okay, I'll keep talking. So then Rose uh, has a great little thing about, um, uh, they started, they want to talk about raising money again because they're all broke. So Rose says, oh, my sister and I, um, we should have a kissing booth. My sister and I had a kissing booth back in St. Olaf. That's another thing that pisses me off really quick. Rose, her St. Olaf stories aren't set up the same way. No, they're not. Isn't that so weird? Yeah. You have a foolproof formula with the St. Olaf story and, she, and it's all weird. So yeah. she says, my sister and I had a kissing booth 
back in St. Olaf, which I don't think she even says it that way, we made a fortune in general the joke. So it's like, it's like, and she's like, people drove from all over the state to the, for the kissing booth. And he's like, and um, um, what's his name? Uh, John Cheadle. Ch Chud, Chud, something like that? What is his name? I don't remember his name. But he says, Bas oh, Roland. Roland, he says, Roland. He says, wait, people drove from all over to, to kiss you in a kissing booth? And she's like, no, we kissed each other. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. God. Um, and then Blanche <laughs> says, at one point, oh, I wish Dorothy was here. She always had the best advice. She always knew just what to say. And Sophia says, hey, I always know what to say, you aging drag queen. <laughs> 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 but then it takes a turn, Christina, doesn't it? It does. It, it does, because somebody has proof that Miles has been unfaithful. Yep. Which is exactly um, what you want to hear. So, yeah. but then I said, I wrote, I, it says, I have proof Miles has been unfaithful to you. But I wrote, does she? Like, she didn't have any proof that he was unfaithful. He just booked, a, allegedly, booked a hotel Yeah. several times. There was no proof. She jumps the gun. Because she's Blanche. Because and Blanche has Blanche. often checks into hotel rooms just for, right, you know. Right, right. But even, you know, Rose says, Wednesday's the night he plays poker. Blanche goes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I did laugh. Rose is, is much stronger in Golden Palace, and I don't think it's always a good idea. No. But she has some good good stuff here. Miles says, um, which, Miles is so lame in this episode. He's like, I just can't decide. And Rose says, this isn't the Pepsi challenge, Miles. I love that. I love that. <laughs> well, the but, other but thing, too, is like... Was, Miles was a good character on, the, on Golden Girls. Now he's like this, like, just this, like, gross, like, unsure I know it was buddy, sad. Buddy weirdo. It's they not didn't good. have to do it this they way. They didn't have to do it this way. Um the other note that I wrote was why wouldn't Miles even know about the hotel? He kind of walked in and didn't really knew know about the hotel. Well no but I thought those things were remember those were an old That was an old yeah, yeah. that was an old thing. But it seemed like they hadn't had a conversation about the hotel when he I, came in. I guess so. Yeah. Oh that's true. So uh, any more notes on that oh, one? Oh, that, that she goes oh. I guess they were having a conversation or whatever, and she said, what What kind of sandwich? And he said, tuna. And she just goes, liar, and slaps his face. <laughs> <laughs> and that's very Golden Girls. That was that, like, yeah. Mom, I want you to know, whatever you tell me, I'll totally believe you. And then she says, well, <laughs> liar. Uh, um, there is... Yeah. So, yeah, so there was a fight, and the guests clap. Fight. Oh, fight in the dining room. Oh, because they keep saying it's like oh, a performance. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that yeah. made me laugh yeah. when the guests all clapped. Um, and then I just, yeah, I read, said the same thing about Miles. Like, there was, he's completely out of character. You know, it's been six months. Maybe he just had feelings and was confused. Seems more like skits in a variety show. That's what I wrote. So, in this episode, I felt like their scenes more seemed more like skits in a variety mm -hmm. show. Mm -hmm. Where is the depth? So, again, not a huge fan of this episode, but we can move on to a, a probably a little bit better episode. I yeah, guess. I will. Well, I will say the thing about like the, you know, the audience or not the audience, like the, the other guests being <laughs> essentially the audience followed their fights. I appreciated it because it spoke to the challenge with like, there's no, they have no privacy. Like yeah. there's no, you know, um, and stuff. So I was like, well, that's an interesting way of getting around. They think, they think it's just theater. But it, it, they, they just use the joke too many times, yeah. I think. Um, so now we dive into The Return of Dorothy. Yes, episode number, number seven. seven. Seems like old times, part one. Yep. And I noticed right away. So you've watched it throughout. Yep. There was no more kid in this episode. When did the kid disappear? So I think, I think he disappeared later on. There's okay. one, I'll tell you this. There was one episode where... It starts off, he's sitting in a chair. The episode starts this way, and, and Blanche says, can you bring these these towels to Rose? And he says, sure, and he, like, never comes back. And, and that, was, that like, was that? And that was it. I hope he wasn't kidnapped. Well, he might have been. But, it, yeah, I thought that was kind of weird. It was just but a little anyway. weird. There's no, I mean, I miss, I, unless, I, unless I didn't catch an episode that explains his, just his disappearance. Um, um, so I wrote, the first thing I wrote was, Dorothy's back, warm fuzzies everywhere. It was so nice to see her again. Mm -hmm. I missed her so much. Before that happens, though, Roland has a great line. Oh, what is it? Because they're say? all talking. Dorothy's not there yet. And they're like, blah, 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 blah. And, and Roland says, this is just a hunch, but was Dorothy the smart one? 
(laughs) (laughs) And then Dorothy enters. The crowd goes wild. And it is sustained applause. And... And she just doesn't miss a beat. She's already insulting the cab driver yeah. for a tip. You know, the, the cab driver wants a tip, and she, um, you know, rips mm-hmm. him apart. Uh, but the, but it's hilarious because they do a group hug. Yeah. And then Sophia escapes, and she's like, "I've never <laughs> been as into it as they are." And then she's like, "Gotta get back," and she like goes back to hugging. It was <laughs> completely warm fuzzies all over. Really, you're, you're really, really right. sweet. Yeah. Um, she was a. I felt like Dorothy was a bit too much of a complainer. Like, I feel like, again, I, I do feel like, along with everybody else, it was just too much of her shtick. Yeah. Now she's the complainer. And so she's completely abrupt and complaining to everybody about everything. It was like kind of a downer. Because that's not all she is. No, she wasn't just, you know, she wasn't just that. And I think, though, um, you find out her real reason for being there later on. Yeah. Which maybe explains why she was so grumpy a little bit. Um, but so she also insults the dining, the customer. And she like, yes. and again, it's that list. And I agree because it was like she just lists things off again. Like, it's exactly the same it's, thing with a cab driver. Yes. Um, but I did love seeing B. B. Arthur again. Loved it. I have a side note on this. So Chewy, played by Cheech. Uh, Mary, he basically walks in hungover. And I kept laughing because it was a subtle thing, but like they would talk loud to him. Yeah. Or they would shout at him, like, what do you mean you got engaged or whatever? And, or he was late to cook stuff. Yeah. And his reaction being hungover felt so real yeah, to he me. Was, I actually yeah, really liked, I liked him. him too. Uh, yeah, I really liked him too. I laughed out loud when he said, it, he's like, we were drunk. It was quick. We used a tequila worm as a witness. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Um, I did feel like the cheesecake seemed forced. Like there was like a cheesecake moment, but I I felt like it was forced. Um, it didn't seem like a genuine. Moment. I felt I, to me, I felt the second group hug felt forced. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, great to have Dorothy back. I loved. I did love these episodes. Um, Let's see, uh, someone says to, to Chewy, um, you know, you married, you married a cheap tart in a drunken stupor. And they're like, that's quite the line. <laughs> um, they're talking about adventurous sex. And I think Rose says, um, one time I left the lights on. And Sophia <laughs> says, ladies and gentlemen, Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> and the crowd laughed. Like, that was a big laugh. Um... I don't have much else aside from um, Dorothy. So Dorothy's saying that it's too much for Sophia and that she wants to take her away or whatever. But she doesn't give Sophia much time to decide. Like, I feel like she gave her, like... No, that was a big part because Sophia runs away. Yeah. But the um, but I'm surprised you didn't write this down. What I really liked about this episode is that... And I love when shows do this, and it's very, very rare... And we talked about this. I'm trying to think with what TV show we talked about, where you find out shit later on that's off, you know, that is off camera. Yeah. So you find out that Dorothy has not exactly been the most communicative friend in the last four months. Mm-hmm. Um, Blanche actually throws it in her face. Yes. She's like, oh, you care about Sophia? This, that, that makes the first time in four months. Like, you haven't checked in on yeah. us. And then you find out that Dorothy was jealous because they didn't even ask her for help. They didn't ask her to be part of it, and she felt immediately kicked out of the group. Um, But I liked that, because as a viewer... I I actually really liked that, too. But again, I felt like it was thin. It was only like a couple of of scenes. But I think as a viewer, you're like, what has their friendship been like? And then when Blanche throws it in Dorothy's face, it really puts a negative light on that car on, Dor- on Dorothy's Bornack. Yeah. I appreciated it. And I appreciated that it was like, it was tense. Yeah. And it was like, oh, this is not the way I thought this episode was going to go. Um, I did laugh out loud when Blanche, and this is like, I feel like a, a much better Blanche moment. I don't think Blanche has a lot of good stuff in this, this, this show, but she says, um, they challenged Dorothy and said, listen, you didn't show up for four months or whatever. And she's like, she's like, listen, I have thought about Ma every day. <laughs> Blanche yeah. says, I think about Nick Nolte every day. It doesn't give me the right to go and kidnap him, does it? And then she turns <laughs> to Rose and goes, does it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then we get to part two. 
Yes. The big fight, the cheesecake, the newspaper, and then Rose versus Dorothy, and they all start crying. I really, really, really liked it. I really liked it. This... <gasps> Sorry. Oh, boy. There goes the phone. <laughs> phone. I guess you really liked it. <laughs> so, Sophia runs away. They're trying to find him, yeah. find her. And this is when they find out she goes back to Shady Pines. Which I loved this whole storyline of. This is probably my favorite episode out of all the ones okay, that I watched. Okay, good. Yeah, I really yeah. like this one. And what was funny about it is they just revamped Shady Pines. And it's like a spa. <laughs> yes. And they're trying to find it. They're like, she would never go back there. She would never go back. And there she is. But well, um, you know what's hilarious? You missed the, like an amazing moment. Which one? So she's like, um, I'm going to call... <laughs> She's like, Shady Pines wasn't that bad. And someone's like, I'm just going to call there and, and ask if she's there. And Dorothy goes, they have a phone now? <laughs> 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 and then she's like, you don't understand. They have them They they have them cleaning shellfish, and they call it arts and crafts. Oh, God. Oh my God. I love, I love so those So any Shady, Shady Pines, Pines jokes is so good. So funny. We did not mention something important. There's a, a celebrity sighting in this episode. Yes, there was. The cab driver. Jack Black. Jack Black. Really funny. Showed up as a cab driver. Hilarious. Noticed that right away. Let's but the spa, see. yeah, the spa is great. I love that it was, and it very real. This eight thousand dollars was it eight thousand dollars a day or something like something, something, yeah, insane. Yeah, something like that. But that's not far off. My mom and my sister do a lot with folks um, with senior citizens and people with Alzheimer's, and it's ex it's like eight thousand dollars a no, month, I'm, like I'm a, sure a it minimum is. eight thousand dollars a month. It's expensive to care for seniors. Yeah, this is um, where it was more noticeable to me. Some of the issues. I love this episode. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but yeah, I'm yeah. just as a whole. This is where it started to become a lot more noticeable to me. Where because I was trying to put my finger on, I'm like, why did I hate this show too much? Yeah. You know, so much. And to me, it was because of the extras, of course, that we talked about before. You would have a storyline with the girls, but they would have to slow it down and really thin it out. So that the other characters have a storyline. Whereas before, it would be like Blanche has a storyline, and so you know Sophia has a storyline. Yeah. And so they were all together. Here, the girls have a storyline. The new cast has a storyline. Oh. So I think that that's where I yeah. started to put it together. Like, oh, okay, see, I, I would have liked to have seen more of the Dorothy Blanche interaction, but it, they were too busy talking about their whole life. The is other this, is this damn hotel, and yeah. it really is limiting. And I think that's the problem. Yeah. Um. So I will be honest. I got a little misty what at the card. Well, that oh. that ending is really a downer. It is. Like it's like it's like I got I'm getting goosebumps right now. But it's like. I think it's because they're all dead. But it's like Dorothy realizes that her friends are okay without her. Yeah. And it's really sad. And that, and by the way, that music gets sad. Mm -hmm. And it's a long time for Dorothy to sort of like, she wants to say goodbye, but they can't because they're all too busy. And she looks around and like, and she's like oh. Rose is busy, Blanche is busy, her mom's busy. And like, they don't really have that real goodbye moment. Yeah. And she kind of looks around and she's like, they're okay without me. And she leaves. That was a nice moment. It's nice, but I was surprised by it and how, how kind of touching and sad it was. Yes. Um, yes. So because they gave it, was her... very, it was very final. Yes. It didn't really leave an opening for Dorothy, Dorothy to, to come, come back. back. Ever. Uh, I will say this. They give her a card. So I found the I found the card. You've, oh, he found the card, folks. Yep. It's, it's, someone made a meme. Um, it's oh an Instagram account called... At, it's, yeah, at the Golden Girls 4, the number 4, ever, E-V-R. So they give Dorothy a card as she's about to leave. Okay. And Dorothy reads it in Dorothy's gravely beautiful voice. And she says, this, it, the card says, this card entitles Dorothy Zbornak Hollingsworth to stay in any room at the Golden Palace and eat cheesecake, tell dirty jokes, and have at least two friends who will listen to her cry complain and laugh for the rest of her life Aww. and i legit got misty and i'm like that's super misty. can we post that on patreon too we'll post that yeah that's so cool i, I love that thought that was really touching and very sweet and felt very real for blanche and rose to do that yeah because you know? they missed her they were just got they just got busy that's it. i'm gonna be honest to the credit show's credit and i wasn't crazy about the show like 
when, when it came to Dorothy and the handling of Dorothy, it felt kind of real. It kind of did. There's some resentment yes. there. Some, but, you know, but they love each other, but life goes on and it was a little, little hard to, hard to handle. I agree. If it was just them dealing with it, it would have been fine. Yeah. But it was literally, you have 15 minutes to deal with it because the other 15 minutes is dealing with the other characters. Yeah. It's and true. it's split it up. So, I mean, how are you going to go through that, uh, that, those emotions, the, you know, why is she so angry and why is she, oh, she's jealous and, and she's resentful and you're going to do that in 15 minutes? I That's know. literally like three scenes. No, I know. So now we go to, so episode 22 is, mm -hmm. is um, the death of Stan. So that's going to be on yes. Patreon. Or yes. that's on Patreon. So episode, now we're going to episode 23. So we deal with the last two episodes. Mm -hmm. My big note here is I feel like finally, because I, again, I watched a lot of this. I watched a lot of this on Hulu. The episodes we weren't even supposed to watch, I watched. So I feel like this is Don Cheadle's, some of his best stuff. Mm -hmm. I find him really funny trying to get, take control of the hotel, like trying to keep these punk kids like from ripping them off and mm -hmm. sneaking into the hotel. I found him very funny. I liked Don Cheadle in this a bit. I um, really do too. I like him and I like Cheech. I just felt like I it, didn't it was, want to it show needed with to be them. An, it needed right. to be a different show. Like yep. without the Golden Girls, I would have been fine with. I, I just didn't like them competing with them. Did you, did, was, I can't remember what episode it was where they woke up, where they were laying in bed together. Did, no. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So there was an episode of that. So, um, let's see. Yeah. So Don Cheadle, great comedic timing, really funny. Yeah, and he was, I, and then, he's great. And it was that mm -hmm. moment where I'm like, oh my God, I think maybe they kind of thought Don Cheadle would be the Dorothy. Like the very serious That's one. That's when you figured it out in episode 23? I did. I think I did. Okay. Yeah. You, you thought, you thought this was, he was a Dorothy replacement? Uh, immediately. Well, you haven't said that. Well, I did, sort of, because no, you didn't. When, when we were talking about the first, very first episode, yeah. talking about the roommate, I said they should have just had Don Cheadle in as the roommate. Oh, is that, I didn't know that's what you meant by that. Cause you Apology didn't, accepted. Because you didn't, because you didn't say it. You I didn't, didn't say I didn't why. I, need, I didn't think I needed oh to. Oh my God, Christina. Really? Well, okay. anyway, I didn't really catch on to that. So, um, yeah, I loved Roland trying to catch the bad kids, but I got to tell you, this episode was bad. I mean, in this yep. and the last, I'm just jumping ahead. This, that last episode was terrible. They I gave didn't, up. I didn't laugh once. No, that they gave last... up by these two episodes. They knew it wasn't working. Yeah. I'm like, we got to get something on paper. That, the last two episodes were so unfunny. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know who, I don't know what was going on there. Maybe they just gave, maybe they gave up. Uh -huh. um, so get this. So then Rose, at one point, is t her granddaughter comes to visit. Rose tells her granddaughter that she would work on the dirt road outside her church every time she would have a sexual urge. And, um, and her daughter said, well, how did that work out? And um, she's like, well, it's now known as the Minneapolis Freeway. <laughs> <laughs> and that's funny. Uh, so if he has a good line, says, listen, you know, aging is difficult. One night, um, you go to bed. I went to bed young and beautiful. The next morning, I woke up looking like someone left a Barbie on the radiator. <laughs> Um, oh God. Yeah. They hug at one point. Uh, the audience goes, aw. I'm like, that's really bad. There's a sign. If somebody literally Le held, held up, up a sign that I, said, say, aw. I, I would guarantee it. Oh, it's the, I think it's, it's Rose and her, her granddaughter. Yeah. That's what happened. Um, and then it's so weird. Chewy lied about the world record and this is gigantic burrito. I don't understand. I don't understand any of the stuff. It felt like busy work. It I don't was, understand. I said the boys slipping in behind Roland's back is stupid. This episode is all over the place. Yeah. And, and even the even the Charlene, Rose's granddaughter, bad. that whole thing. That whole storyline is stupid. She's not her mother, for one thing. Yeah. And I don't understand, like, why there wasn't just, like, a conversation. And, like, what granddaughter is going to ask their grandmother if About she can have sex? sex. And, yeah. Like, <laughs> the whole thing was just weird. Super weird. Weird, Super weird. weird. Oh, and then Sophia, the kids are afraid of old people. That whole thing. Like... None of it was funny. Yeah. The giant burrito was stupid. Well, also with that, I mean, honest and truly, so imagine being at a hotel and being, yeah, so, um, this happened, this happened, there's no activities, but let's make the biggest burrito. Like, yeah, have fun with that. I'm going to go to the beach. Yeah. Or I'm going to go, what, what was the problem with the thing? Um, what was the problem they were dealing with? Do you remember? There was, well, there was a hurricane coming. Yeah. 
Um, so they couldn't go outside, but then something else happened and they couldn't go there. It was a frat party. So they were stuck there and they just made a giant, a giant burrito. It just seems so, oh my God, talk about forced. It was really, really forced. Still no waitresses. Yeah. So I know, I guess they never really turned a profit on this, right? Because they never had help. And then they get in a fight, right? So this granddaughter yells at Rose. Yeah. And I wrote, who speaks to their grandmother that way? Yep. And of all people, Rose. I know. Like, no one's going to yell at Rose like that. That's, it's, she was so awful. Yep. Like, oh, could not stand her. I agree. I don't even, I don't, I'm going to be honest, it's a little mean, but I didn't think the acting was that great either. So, are we ready to go to the last episode? The only other oh, quote sure. I have written down here that made me chuckle yeah. was at the end, Roland says something, like, she's, he's hanging around with the, the, the other ladies, and he says something like, something is making me old. <laughs> but, like, it's because, like, they're hanging out with him. <laughs> <laughs> so that kind of made me laugh. There's, a, there's some really funny lines in this. It's just, there's just not a, an episode full of them. You know and what I mean? And it's not, yeah, it's not, there's no foundation for it. We, it's we, like, we called it out. Here, we called it out. It, it, the problem is the goddamn hotel. That's okay. the problem. Okay. And now we come across my least favorite episode of the entire series. Mine too. Good. I can't believe this is the last episode of the, of the of the series. Yep, I said not a great finale. I didn't <laughs> laugh. I didn't laugh once. I, was, I think I I think I giggled with the dream sequence once, and I wrote, wrote it down. I was embarrassed for everybody involved. Yeah, I was so embarrassed for them to pump out this awful, awful forced forced and let me tell you how funny ridiculous storyline episode absolutely atrocious this boyfriend who we've never met before of blanche's suddenly mm -hmm. is, suddenly is very persuasive well and i was wondering because i like i said i hadn't seen any of this. oh no he never, never shows up before. this no, is the first no. time we're meeting this on, guy okay. tacked on that this makes is sense. called the chicken and the egg so rebecca returns conveniently at around the same time blanche's boyfriend who we've never met before is really interested in having kids and doing some sort of artificial insemination situation. Well, first he wants to get married. First he wants he wants to marry her and get you know have a baby. Yeah. And then they start talking about the artificial insemination. I think after yeah. that. Um. So it's nice to see Rebecca again, but immediately Rebecca walks in and Blanche has something very different on her mind, which is so unsavory, mm -hmm. like so like like disturbing gross and she like and she's like oh i guess my i, I am she's almost like you can't put all your eggs it's some some like a lot of like very punny dialogue and then she's like oh um whatever someone here comes a new basket of eggs now or something like that yeah. which i would I, and so it many, was really really stupid. so many new problems so many problems with this 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 plot but then um <laughs> the b plot on this is even dumber and less funny so they're trying to teach old ladies self-defense oh. but all it is and they're really pushing this that i guess the joke here is that they're practicing it practicing self-defense on chewy right and all they're doing is like beating up cheech cheech on the ground over and over again and like yeah this isn't funny it's it wasn't even funny the first time around no nope. so i here's a <laughs> Kristen, did you see what i wrote i wrote my one laugh one laugh. One, that right there? One <laughs> laugh. Here's my laugh. Ready? So there's a dream sequence where Rose, Blanche, and Roland are all, right, they're all pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, and Sophia is also pregnant, right, with a walker. Is that, am I remembering? Yeah, they're all they're pregnant. They're all pregnant. Yeah. It's a dream sequence. And Sophia says, want to feel a kick. And because she's pregnant. And um, so I think it's Rose or maybe Blanche is like, oh, okay. And Sophia literally kicks her. Yeah. That and was funny. she's like, how can you do this? Because I guess it was like all Rose's fault or Blanche's fault. But what's really funny is any true Golden Girls fan will remember the second to last episode, the, sorry, the third to last episode of the Golden Girls series finale of the Golden Girls is Rose has a heart attack. She has a dream sequence in the hospital where they have all donated their heads yeah. to science. The dialogue is, too, it's like so similar. And I'm like, I don't know if this is an homage or if this is just cheap, mm. but it's a throwback to the heads frozen. They're all, and, and it's like, I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry. And the person comes out of the dream saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. It is exactly that scene in the Golden Girls. So it's, now it's just lazy. Yeah. So they're now they're, it's they're just super stealing. Yeah. They're just stealing from their own material. Mm-hmm. And, that, yet that's and not it's even, insulting. And yet that's not even the worst of it. Oh, Here's the worst thing. I found this to be so fucking rude. Uh, so Rebecca says, well, you're only as someone said, I think, I think either Rebecca says or Blanche says, Blanche says, well, you're only as smart as your parents. And Rebecca says, maybe you're not my real mama. Oh. I felt so bad for Blanche. I'm like, how is this the last episode of the season slash series? It's so mean to these beloved characters. Yep. You have made them broke. You've made them desperate. You've made them not unique. Mm-hmm. You've given them no life. No life at all. No screen time. Yeah. No substance. Yeah. Really just, yeah. And I'd say, I mean, I have a couple of notes and then the rest is my, and then I have my asking question. Yeah. Mine, I just, it's basically the same thing. I'm yeah. just, I, I was just flabbergasted that they were going to try to have Blanche get pregnant. I mean, really. How ridiculous. And that's when I started, I wrote up the ages. So she would have been 61 in this episode. No 61 year old is going to get pregnant. It brings up some... Why would she want to have a baby? She doesn't want... She's never mentioned anything about having a baby. To ever. what? To keep a man? That is not Blanche at it's all. It's not Blanche That's at not Blanche all. at all. And I will also say this. Any true Golden Girls fan remembers mm-hmm. this already kind of happened when she was wearing sunglasses and pushing a baby carriage. She was push, pushing her granddaughter uh-huh. and the Golden Girls. And the guy, the actor, oh no, no, yeah, was like, he thought it was her daughter and she played it off that it was. And then when he said, you know, it's like, oh, well, you know, whatever. And she, she has said repeatedly on the Golden Girls, I'm not having any more babies. And she even thought, Re- she even thought Rebecca was crazy for having a baby. That's right. So, this rings completely false. And not only that, it really sets Blanche up for a lot of just mean jokes. Just mean. Yeah, you're it's, old. I, I felt bad for her. I felt bad for Rue. I felt yeah. bad for Blanche. Terrible, terrible, terrible they didn't finale. Just, they didn't do the characters a, a, a service here at all. Yeah, I, I really think by the time episode 23 and 24 came around, they were just like, no, this isn't going to work. Let's just like throw something down. Well, I'll also argue, and to your point about Rose and the granddaughter, you said no one talks to their grandmother like that. And I wonder if these were old Golden Girls scripts mm-hmm. and they just changed some of the details. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Because it, it would have to only, it would only work if, so A, what if it wasn't Rose's granddaughter? What if it was Rose's, um, I don't know, uh, virgin daughter or virgin, sure. or virgin St. Olaf friend or something, you know? Yep. And with Blanche, um, it, it, she's too old for this. Mm-hmm. 61 years old, trying to get you know, pregnant. I mean, it's just so bizarre. Not only that, but wanting to have a baby. Like it's not just like, and she's so vain. I mean, come on. There's no way. There's no way. So not the same character. So, so yeah. So I will say this, the golden girls, uh, sorry, golden pals did start strong in the ratings and it, and then it just consistently lost its audience. And I don't, I'm not surprised. Yeah. It doesn't um, surprise me at all. But I do have a match game. Okay. Very good. Oh, did you, well, (gasps) did you like it? Better okay. or worse? So, Same. it is... <laughs> I didn't like it, and yet it's better than I had anticipated and what I remembered the first time around. Because, I mean, I legit hadn't watched this in, what? So, 01, 01, 20, 30 years. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, and I... It's hard for me to say, because I really did not like it this time around. Yeah. I really didn't like it last the first time around. I guess I gave it more of a chance this time around. Uh, well, me too. We had so to. So, we had no choice. <laughs> so, um, I almost, I guess if I liked it at all, it was because I could at least pay attention to the secondary characters, and I liked, I liked, like, the Don Cheadle. I liked Don Cheadle. Mm-hmm. I liked his character. I liked Cheech's character. But I didn't really like it as uh, those characters in the Golden Girls mm-hmm. realm. And I got mad. I got so mad at their, like, dismissiveness to the actors, to the characters. Yeah. So I almost want to, I don't know. I guess that, that to me, that, that emotion overrides my like for the Don Cheadle and Cheech characters. Yeah. So I would say I liked it even less. 
interesting. And so my, um, I completely get it and I, I understand. And, um, interesting little fact that I read that, so in the, in the Golden Girls, Sophia, Estelle Getty relied on cue cards a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. And you can, and you can definitely tell sure. sometimes. Golden Palace, she didn't. And Rue McClanahan has said that she believes she was intimidated by B. Arthur. Because B. Arthur was always completely polished. Because B. Arthur was from the theater world. But Estelle was too, actually. But I think I think Estelle was intimidated by B. And mm-hmm. she had she relied on the cue cards so she wouldn't forget her lines. So I think she was afraid. So by now on Golden Palace, and I actually think Estelle Getty's has a lot of great great. I really moments liked in this. her. She yeah, she might have been my favorite. But I mean I feel like I don't know. I mean, she was sort of like the the fourth wheel. Oh yeah, in the Golden Girls. Yeah. So, in a way, it's a similar feeling in the Golden Palace. Yeah. Except that this time, all three of them are the fourth wheel. In a way. So for me, it wasn't so different for Sophia. I, for God's sake, where are the Saint? Where are the Sicily stories? Where are the Saint Olaf stories? Where's Blanche's? There's crazy no time. Stories? Yeah, you're right. Actually, you're right. There's no time for it because they have to have Cheech and and, and Don Cheadle's and their, and their storylines story where we meet. Sh- there's we meet no, Chewie's friends. There's no yeah. relaxing. There's no chatting. Yeah. There's none of that charm. Yeah. It's unfortunate. Very. Are you ready for my match game? Maybe they'll redo it again. <laughs> oh, Christina, oh. too soon. It is too soon. All right, so Sophia. Sophia. Sophia must really want to cater to an elderly clientele. Oh, yeah, why? I know. It's well because instead of putting a mint on the pillows, she puts a blank. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How about this? I don't know if it's going to be a match. Right. Okay, ding. All right, ding. Christina, Sophia must really want to cater to an older clientele. Mm-hmm. Instead of putting a mint on everyone's um, hotel room pillows, she puts a blank. She puts a hearing aid. Oh, damn. No, I put multivitamin. <laughs> you know, oh my God, my first thought was blood pressure pill. That would have been oh, more of a... Oh, good. That would have been more so of So my, uh, my second was Beniva. <laughs> <laughs> cute, very cute. All right, you want my... Ready for my Please. questions? Is it a match game? It's a match <gasps> game. Yay. It's a match game. Okay. All right. So Dorothy decided to come back and live with Rose and Blanche and Sophia again. Oh, wow. Yeah. But she had one condition. Okay. It was to get rid of the bed and breakfast and replace it with a blank. <laughs> I know it. Okay. I'm ready. Oh, already? Good. Oh, yeah. This I have is very easy. Down. All right. So, Dorothy decided to oh. come back. Yeah. And live with um, the girls again. Yeah. But she had the one condition. They needed to get rid of that bed and breakfast. Yeah. And replace it with a... Library! Oh, oh that's <gasps> cute. I like that. I like that a lot. What did you have? No, I said they have to replace it with a cheesecake factory. <laughs> a literal cheesecake factory. Because of cheesecake. Like, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, cute. Yeah. Uh, very, very cute. Yeah, the golden library or the golden cheesecake factory. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. The golden library would work. So, yeah, so... Um, and yeah, and so join us on Patreon for the stand, so, yeah, the we'll, Death of we'll, Stan episode. We have, um, yeah, it's already posted up there, so take a listen. See if we like this any better than the Golden <laughs> Palace episodes. <laughs> And that's it for us in this episode of Old Roommates. Thanks for listening. Please subscribe to Old Roommates on iTunes, YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And please give us a rating or review while you're there. And if you're interested in more Old Roommates, including special episodes, bonus content, movie recommendations, and more, visit our Patreon page at patreon.com. That's P A T. R E O N dot com slash old roommates. Comments and ideas can be emailed to us at old roommates pod 
at gmail.com. And don't forget to follow us on social media at Old Roommates. Thanks again for listening. This is Christina. And this is Brian. Until next time.